Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. We start the second video on the November 18 paper 1 1 and this will cover question 24 to question 40. With question number 24. Which row shows the type of joint and the type of movement permitted at a joint in the forelimb? So the two joints that they've given you is elbow and shoulder. Now you know shoulder is a ball and socket joint and you know the elbow is a hinge joint. So that is something that you must know that shoulder is a ball and socket joint and the elbow is a hinge joint. Now the shoulder allows movement in three planes. You can move your arm in front and back and side and in all 360 degrees. And that's three planes. Please understand that. That is in three planes. While the elbow joint is a hinge joint, but it doesn't allow movement in three planes. It allows movements only in one plane. So they've got this wrong for elbow ball and socket is wrong. And so this why the answer is C. Then coming on to question number 25, the graph shows the death rates from liver disease in two different countries. Now there's country X and there's country Y. And then as we can see the females. So I'm going to color the females in red. And then I'm going to color the females here in red. And then the males are these. Now look at the graph very carefully. Now it says what could explain the difference between the two countries. Now the two countries, the difference is that the males are more in both the countries. The females are less in both the countries. But in country Y, the males and females are much more than in country X. Now you can figure out what fewer males in country X. No, that's wrong. There are more males in country X. Less consumption of fatty foods in. Now liver disease is caused by alcohol consumption, not by fatty food. That results in heart disease, fatty foods. More infectious diseases in country Y, that's nothing to do with liver diseases. Liver diseases you have to associate with the alcoholism. So the only answer was less drinking of alcohol. So this was correct. And this is what you had to understand. Liver disease, cirrhosis of the liver, alcohol intake. And that is what you were supposed to correlate. Then coming on to question number 26. Which statement is correct for all viruses but not all bacteria and fungi? All viruses are total parasites. They are not even called living. They are non-cellular. But not for all bacteria and fungi. So you see some bacteria cause disease. Some fungi cause disease. All bacteria do not cause disease. When you are having yogurt, you are having bacteria. That does not cause disease. And fungi, you are having mushrooms. You are having yeast when you are having pizza. So you have to remember is that do not cause. Uh, they do not. They are not all parasites. But viruses are all parasites because a virus has to live on another host cell. It cannot live on its own and then it injects its DNA. And then the virus invades this and then asks this host cell to make copies of its DNA and then asks the host cell to make its protein coat. And then it destroys the host cell and these virus particles are released. Virus particles are released. Virus is non-cellular. It's not even a cell. It has no cytoplasm. It only has either a DNA or an RNA strand. And it does not have a nucleus containing DNA. Viruses do not have a nucleus. Virus just has a protein coat and a DNA or an RNA strand. That's it. There's no cytoplasm. There's nothing in it. It's very, very tiny. Question 27. The graph shows how the rate of penicillin production from the fungus penicillium varies with temperature at two different oxygen concentrations. So this was high oxygen concentration and this was low oxygen concentration. But please remember there was none in which there was no oxygen. So this one is incorrect. We did not have any graph for anaerobic respiration. So that is why the answer is 1 and 3 and the answer was C in which you could understand why it was C. There was no graph. There was high oxygen and low oxygen, but there was no graph saying no oxygen. So anaerobic is out. 
So only one and three were correct. Question 28, which organisms always obtain their energy from dead organic matter? Well, the only answer was decomposers. Consumers are the one which eat other animals or plants, primary consumer, secondary consumer, tertiary consumer. Fungi are those which are, uh, they are heterotrophs. They, some of them live on, they are some of saprophytes and live on dead organic matter, not all of them. And producers are those which are autotrophs, which can make their own food. So they don't have to depend on dead organic matter. Now question 29 is a rather complex question. Let's look at it very slowly and carefully. The diagram shows part of a food web and you have all these different things. Now, which pyramid of numbers is based on this food web? Now, important thing is you've got to understand pyramid of numbers. So the first thing we have is trees. So let's look at the trees. And on the trees, you have aphids, caterpillars, and snails, and slugs. So which pyramid of numbers is based on this food web? And then you had snails, and then you had thrushes and hedgehogs, and then you had eagles and foxes and badgers. And the numbers, you have to understand is that the number will only increase. Now, why is this wrong? You have to be very careful when you're reading this question. Now, the most important thing in this was it was trees. So if it was talking of trees, now this could not be the number of trees, couldn't be more in the beginning because the number of birds is always more than the trees. So these, both these were wrong. You see, we had aphids, caterpillars, snails, and slugs. And say the trees were say 10 or 20 or 30 or 40 even. But these would have many, many more. These will be in hundreds or thousands. So then you have to narrow down to A and B. It could have been B. It could have been A. Why? Because the tree here was lesser in number here. And then what have you to figure out? You have to realize is that as the numbers are going up in the last so we had four. One, two, three, four. In the last one, we had eagles, foxes, and badgers. And these numbers should have decreased. While in this case, this number is increasing, which means it's a parasite. But this wasn't a parasite. This only increases when there's a parasite. That is why B was wrong. So you had to understand is, first of all, you have to get C and D wrong. And then you have to narrow down to A and B. And then you have to figure out which one was correct. Was it A or was it B? But the last, the final consumer, you see, this would be the producer, then the primary consumer, then the secondary consumer, and then the tertiary consumer. And this was the tertiary consumer. These numbers should have decreased. So that is why the answer was A. Question 30. Which human activity is likely to contribute most to global warming? Naturally, in global warming, we have more of the uh, greenhouse gases, and that is the carbon dioxide, sulfur dioxide, oxides of nitrogen. So emissions from burning fossil fuels. This was the only one that was correct. Air pollution by acidic gases would not be causing global warming. It is carbon dioxide and methane which reflect back the heat rays and result in global warming. If you're not clear on this, you need to revise global warming. Then question 31. Draining stagnant water is one method of controlling the malarial mosquito. Which stages in the mosquito life cycle does this method destroy? You see, you remember the eggs are laid in stagnant water and then hatches out a larva, which is again in the water and then hatches out a pupa, molds into, and then the adult flies off. So the adult mosquito flies off. So it was only the egg larva and the pupa, so the adult was wrong. So if you knew that, only then you knew these three contained the adult, so the adult was wrong. It was the egg larva and the pupa. So draining stagnant water, the adult doesn't live in stagnant water, the adult flies away. So if you didn't know the life cycle of mosquito, well then here there was trouble, you couldn't do this question. 32. In recent years, important rivers in many parts of the world have become more acidic. What has caused this change? 
So it couldn't have been insecticides, it couldn't have been deforestation, and couldn't have been nitrate fertilizer. The only thing possible was air pollution by sulfur dioxide, because the sulfur dioxide in the air combines with water to form sulfuric acid. And this sulfuric acid is washed into rivers and lakes and ponds. So acid is sulfur dioxide, air pollution by sulfur dioxide. So that is why the answer was A. Then coming on to question 33. The diagram shows a section through a flower. What are the names of the labeled structures? You know W is anther, X is the stigma, Y is the ovary, and Z is the ovule. So the answer was A. Question number 34. Some seeds are sown in four dishes under different conditions as shown in the table. In which dish will the seeds germinate most rapidly? Temperature was 1, 1, 20, 20. Wet or dry, dry, wet, dry, wet. Now you know the factors necessary for germination are what? An adequate temperature, water and oxygen. Not air, please remember that. So it was water, temperature and adequate temperature, enough water and oxygen. So it had to be 20 and wet. You needed water with it. You needed an optimum temperature, not one degree is very, very, is, uh, even in a fridge it's four degrees, it's le less than that even. And it needed not air, but oxygen. You can't say air, air has other gases in it as well. So that is why the answer was D. Now, in this question number 35, which row shows a disease? and the pathogen that causes it. So we've got AIDS, you know AIDS is caused by a virus, this was wrong. Malaria is not caused by an insect, it is caused by plasmodium, which is a protozoa. Is a protozoa, it's not a bacteria, it's not a fungus. It's a separate category of organisms. And the only correct answer was syphilis and the bacteria. Then coming on to question number 36. The graph shows the concentration of hormone in the blood during one menstrual cycle. Concentration of hormone in the blood. Which hormone concentration was measured? You have to remember is the one that rises on day 14 is LH. Because it forms the ovulation takes place and the corpus luteum is formed. You need to revise this if you are not clear on this. So it is called the luteinizing hormone. So that is why B was correct. You need to revise the graph for the menstrual cycle. Then coming on to question number 37. What is the primary function of DNA? It controls the production of protein. It doesn't control nutrients. It doesn't control the rate of mutation. It doesn't control the rate of reproduction. It controls the production of proteins. Should insulin be made? Should insulin not be made? Should pepsin be made? Should it not be made? DNA controls that and it contains the genes. Genes are the genetic information which is the uh, recipe to make a protein. Then coming on to question number 38. In the ABO blood group system, which genotype is homozygous dominant? Now this is heterozygous. This is again heterozygous. This is homozygous recessive. Heterozygous, heterozygous, IAIO is heterozygous, IAIB is heterozygous, IOIO is homozygous recessive, so it's only which is IBIB which was homozygous dominant, so this would be homozygous dominant and this would be a person with blood group B. Question 39, in a species of plant, the allele for yellow flowers is dominant to the alleles for white flowers. Now, I always tell you, always look at the recessive alleles, and the recessive ones would be small a, small a. And the dominant yellow ones would be either big A, big A, or big A, small a. Now, I'm just giving A is the letter. You can use any letter as far as I'm concerned. Which offspring is possible to produce from a cross between two plants heterozygous for flower color? So, if they are both small, big A, small a, then what do we have? We have big A, big A. Now this will be yellow. 
then we have big a small a this will be yellow then we have big a small a this will also be yellow and then we have small a small a and these will be white so this is the ones which are yellow so we would have heterozygous yellow flowers and we would have homozygous yellow flowers and then we would have some homozygous white i'm going to explain this again question 39 in a species of plant the allele for yellow flowers is dominant so these would be big a big a or big a small a and the allele for white flowers the white flowers would be small a small a now it says which offspring is it possible to produce from a cross between two plants heterozygous so heterozygous means it would be this now what are the offsprings going to be big a big a then big a small a then again big a small a and the last one will be small a small a now if you look at this answer why is this correct heterozygous yellow these are the two heterozygous yellow then homozygous yellow this would be the homozygous yellow and then the homozygous white this one will be the homozygous white so this is how you have to figure it out you must do this rough work on the paper you are allowed to do this rough work these papers are not going to go to cambridge for checking only your answer key is going to go for checking so you need to do this and you need to be correct about doing it and you need to do it very carefully and then of course assess which answer is correct coming to the last question which is question number 40 which statement is correct evolution is natural selection evolution results in natural selection natural selection and evolution are independent of each other wrong natural selection results in evolution so that's why naturally d is correct now that completes uh, this paper and i hope now this has been helpful to you and you can do the genetics questions a little better as we proceed this video covered question 24 to question 40 and uh, please revise these do these papers before you attempt you look at the video you should have done these questions before and then you look at the book questions which you were not clear about at the ones you got wrong and thank you very much once again and best of luck for your exams